Were you intimidated at the thought of playing Jesus? Strangely, I like to say, I must have been drunk. But <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. Huh? I wasn't. I, I will say that I remember, I think this is worth talking about, but I had done Platoon, just to, mm. for fun. Um, I hope it's worth it. Um, uh, I had done Platoon, and I got nominated for yeah. an Academy Award, mm. which was really a big deal for me, and still is, but I mean, in this particular, mm -hmm. this was the first time I was nominated. And after that, even though I, I didn't win, I was nominated, and I got offered all kinds of things. And I was kind of overwhelmed by it, because I kept on looking at stuff and said, well, this is great, this is a great opportunity, but I don't feel it, I, it's mm -hmm. not right for me. And I waited a long time because it felt like they were indiscriminately throwing stuff at me because I was a new face, and they could get things going because people were starting to talk about you as a new face. So I held out for the right thing. And the scary part is that almost a year went by, and I didn't work, wow. kind of an Oscar curse, you know? Mm -hmm. And then finally I thought, i got to get back to work. I was working in the theater every day, but I mean, you know, and, and touring, doing lots of stuff, but as far as the next film project... So finally I thought, i got to get to work. And I found a script that was a very good script. It was a little bit of a risk because the director was new. And I'm sorry, it was set in Vietnam, which is like the worst thing to follow Platoon up with, but it was a very different movie. So I did that. It was a very challenging movie. I uh, had a lot of problems with it, quite frankly. A movie called Off Limits. Mm. Um, it wasn't, didn't get a good reception. And that's where I was, and I thought, okay, I'm back to square one, mm -hmm. and I'm at the theater. I'm in Massachusetts teaching with the theater company at, uh, at a university, little acting classes and things. And I get a call, Martin Scorsese wants to talk to you. He wants to send you a script. And I say, yes. And they say, uh, Last Temptation of Christ. And I'm like, really? What role? <laughs> and they're like, oh, idiot. <laughs> And I say, oh, okay, okay. And, I, and really, I'm secretly thinking, what a nutty idea. Boy. I really am. Mm. And then I read the script, and I say, I get it. And then when I met him, I thought, I get it. Mm. And when he said one of the th things that he asked me to do before we started was to see Pasolini's... Uh, Matthew. Uh, yeah, uh, Gospel According mm -hmm. to Matthew, and I got it. And I said, I get what he's trying to do here. I get what this script is. I get the world that we're trying to inhabit. And I, yes, I'm the right guy to do it. And on some level, I mean, it, it sounds egotistical or arrogant, but on some level, I, that's what I like to feel. I got to feel like I'm the guy to do this, you know? If sometimes if I feel like a million people could do it, I step away, you hmm. know? What was school safety like? Great, great. I mean, this was a low-budget movie. And, you know, for all the stories you hear about, you know, on, uh, on the one with uh, Liza Minnelli and Robert De Niro. New York, New York. New York, New York. You know, a hundred takes and all that. We were going two, three. Oh, really? <laughs> three takes. Yeah, because oh. it was a low-budget movie. But he's a master filmmaker, and he had it all in his head. And even though we had very limited crew and, and resources, it was very clear in how to shoot it. So I think the brisk pace actually helped us because it took us away from sitting on it or developing too much pageantry. Mm -hmm. um, it really forced us to be essential and direct with what we were doing. It, here's a guy who he was one great, pointed, I loved it. Oh, he, he, he'd thought of being a seminarian at one point. Oh, yeah. Did you have conversations with him about who was Jesus? How do I play this role? No. No, because... This story is really the beautiful thing about this story. I had to cleanse myself of all that dialogue huh. because that had to be a personal thing. And it had to be about a guy that, you know, Stephen, I have something for you to do. And you're like, who's that? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's basically where yes, it starts, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, I'm writing here. I'm doing these talks, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm teaching whatever. Mm -hmm. No, we have something <laughs> else for you to do. <laughs> you yes. know? It's like that. I'm, I'm, so not ready. A, I'm not ready for that challenge. <laughs> <so. me neither. laughs> Only in pretend. Yes. Um, no, I'm ready. No. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, and this is about the human Christ. I mean, and I, it's I must reactive. say. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a passive role. Stuff is being 
acting hmm. on him and he's reacting. So you want to not, I mean, I, it was natural that you wanted to show up as blank as, as possible. But, and, but did you think going in, you know, to what, to, for instance, the voice, um, how am I going to create the voice of Jesus or? I didn't think about that. I thought about playing the scenes because I, I accepted huh. that I was Jesus, you know. I, I wasn't mm. the Jesus. Yes. I was our Jesus mm. in this exercise, in this structure, in this being in Morocco with Harvey Keitel and, and Martin Scorsese and John Lurie and Barbara Hershey. This is what we were doing. And in this configuration, we were going to make something. We were going to do, you know, make an event. Was there any fallout for you personally when, when there was all the reaction against the film? You know, I think when it initially happened, I wasn't that, that well known as an actor, maybe. Um, and they blamed the director, they blamed mm -hmm. the studio. It was a political fight rather than a fight about... So, you know, I always think, people think actors are whores, they'll do anything. Mm -hmm. So they... That helped. They, no, yeah. they really didn't blame mm -hmm. me, I don't think. But I will say, on a couple of occasions, as recent as a couple of years ago, people have not cast me because I did that role. Wow. Two occasions, two occasions. One where I was actually cast in a role and I got a call from the studio, the head of the studio saying, over my dead body you're in this. Forget what you said to the director. Forget what the director said to you. You're not going to be in this movie, okay? You understand? Maybe another time, but not this one because it's just not wow. since you played Jesus, you know, pop, pop, pop. And recently there was another movie that was financed by, um, you know, uh, people f from the religious right that mm -hmm. weren't quite down with this movie. And, uh, yeah, the director was all set to go, and they said, no, we can't do. Wow. But, look, uh, it's not. Yeah. But it wasn't Sam Raimi. It wasn't Raimi, the end so of the world. It wasn't, <laughs> uh, I wasn't blacklisted. Yeah, yeah. They said, Aquaman, I'm not going to be, you're not going <laughs> to be able to. <laughs>